campaigns pushing for more gun control. But as Kit Daniels points out in his article, Obama arms ISIS-linked militants pushes gun control on the very same day. It's right there in the headline. And this documents how Obama authorized a shipment of guns to Syrian opposition, a.k.a. ISIS-linked militants. Now, if you have not been keeping score, these ISIS militants have also had grenades airdropped to them, courtesy of Western-backed governments. These ISIS militants are the ones burning down Christian villages, chopping people's heads off, ripping out people's vital organs. And these are the people that Obama is funding through these campaigns, not to mention the hospital that just got blown up via a U.S. airstrike. But I digress. To talk more about the domestic gun issue, they have a great article on the Chicago Tribune. And it says Chicago shooting victims. And this documents in very explicit detail the number of people that have been killed recently or fairly recently in the city of Chicago. But how often do you hear Obama talk about this? How often do you hear about the 4th of July shootings and Obama come out and say, we need to uh, ban guns because of all these shootings? He doesn't want to draw your attention to the fact that Chicago, Illinois, has some of the strictest gun laws in the nation. And now we see this. 10 killed, 55 wounded in 4th of July gun violence in Chicago. And let us also not forget, report, 82 shot, 14 fatally over holiday weekend in Chicago which is to say all the gangsters and drug dealers and everybody else did not get the memo that they were supposed to turn in their firearms as they would like you to believe everybody does. Now this is to say nothing of the Obama administration running guns into Mexico with Operation Fast and Furious, but that's another story for another day. So keep in mind all these politicians, whether it be Obama, Hillary, or anybody else, spend their adult lives surrounded by secret service, if not all other manner of bodyguards. Mayor Bloomberg, how are you doing? Jason, I grew up in Brooklyn. Okay, in the nice. spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will think, get right back to you. You'll get back to me? They shut down cities to go have their parades or their speaking engagements because you don't have to be some famous person to be the victim of a random crime. You don't have to be famous to be raped in a parking lot or to be mugged or be the victim of a home invasion. And they say, we want to be like Britain. Now, to be fair, Britain does have lower gun violence, but they also have more home invasions, they have more muggings, and things of that sort. On the flip side of that, you look at some place like Mexico that has very stringent gun laws, very low civilian ownership of firearms, except for the cartels who are riding around in the back of trucks with their guns out, like it's some episode of Mad Max. So keep all this in mind the next time they try to take your guns away. It's not the firearm, it's the person, it's the ill intent. Every year we see mothers drown their kids in four inches of bath water. Are you going to ban bathtubs? Of course not. You recognize this is a person that was mentally ill, had, in, had ill intent, and then you try to fix the problem from there. You can find more reports on Infowars.com. I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hands. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Your liver can be full of fatty deposits, built up toxins, and even dangerous objects known as liver stones. We worked with the top developers in the field of detox to take tried and true herbs and other compounds known to safely cleanse the liver and fuse it with the latest research and technological development on concentrating these ingredients to give you the maximum effect. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWars Life, Com. See the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally organic and made of the safest high-quality herbs. But that said, you need to consult your physician before you do the full detox. Liver Shield can also be used daily by itself for overall upkeep of the liver. Secure your Liver Shield today exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com for the lowest price available. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash and gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. 
We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. Well, we've been warning you about this for years. The overthrow of the United States Constitution in favor of the UN agenda. And that's exactly what happened last week. The Obama administration and the UN have announced the formation of a global police force to fight extremism in the US. Now, Attorney General Loretta Lynch has, is calling this the Strong Cities Network. Uh, she's gonna be working in several American cities uh, working on what, a law enforcement initiative that will actually encompass the globe. And David, now this is going to override the Constitution. It's, it's much bigger than uh, well, it's fighting very extremism. It's very troubling, Leanne, because this is yet another example of information sharing. I mean, if we look at these uh, press releases from the Justice Department and others, and we looked at a word cloud, what we're going to see here over and over again is sharing, global, extremism, and we need to look at what they're talking about when they talk about extremism. We're going to cover that in just a moment. But we need to look at what they're talking about in terms of the global aspect. We need to understand that what they're looking at here is yet another example, just as we've got corporations constantly spying on you and sharing information with each other, sharing information prominently with the government. They now want to do this at a local level. Think of it kind of like Agenda 21, where they're working uh, grassroots level to enact a global agenda. And of course, that global agenda is total information awareness. We've mm -hmm. talked many times about how they want to create a geospatial intelligence. They want to know everything about you that they can possibly know about you, map it onto a location, and then use that in a pre-crime type of way. Right. And that's very concerning. But it's also concerning the way that they're selling this. Now, they talk about, they say, cities are vital partners in international efforts to build social cohesion and resilience to violent extremism. You know, when I look at that, I think about what Jefferson said about cities. He said they're a threat to the health, the wealth, and the liberties of man. And that's exactly what they're doing with this. They say they lament the fact there's no systematic effort in place to share experiences, to pool resources on a global scale. So that's what this is about. And the cities that have uh, joined onto this right now, Leanne, is about two dozen cities. Uh, we got four in Africa, eight in Europe, two in the Middle East, five in North America, two in South America, then Australia, India. 
it's very much centered at the moment in Europe, especially there's disproportionately represented in Denmark. And one of the reasons it's focused there is because the people that are going to be running this, according to the Department of Justice press release, is a group that says it will be run by the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, a think tank. Well, who are these people? <laughs> this is a think tank I'd never heard of before. They originally were founded as the Club of Three. That sounds kind of ominous. It was actually France, the UK, and Germany that were talking about this. And of course, they were set up to counter extremism in Europe. Now, what do they mean by extremism in Europe? If you look at their uh, recent uh, uh, focuses where they've had uh, uh, conferences and papers, the focus has been on those who are anti-immigrant and anti-Islam. Just like the Southern Poverty Those Law Center. Those the extremists. Exactly. Right. They're not concerned about Islam. As a matter of fact, they push back very hard against that. There's another paper just recently done in May of this year, Jihadi Brides, Myths and Realities Revealed. So they say that the whole idea of uh, Jihadi Brides is a myth. They push back very hard against Islamic extremism domestically. They will talk about ISIS. Yes, they're concerned about ISIS. They're concerned about radicalization of people then going to fight for ISIS. And so that brings their focus then on the internet, another area where we should be concerned because their prescription is going to be to focus on controlling the internet. But really where they're hanging out is defining extremism as anybody who is nationalistic, anybody who is anti-Islam or anti-immigrant. That is the extremism that they're talking about. Right, That's so what's it's, very not, it's not the extremists uh, that the Obama administration is arming that's they're right. in Syria That's or, right. or, or flooding the European Union with or even allowing to cross over our borders as they're now reporting that ISIS militants might possibly be on U.S. soil. Mm -hmm. But it's not those mm -hmm. extremists. No, no. Yeah, they're very they're very much not concerned about extremists who are in country. They're concerned about the radicalization of people to go to ISIS predominantly, but then they push back very hard against the notion that we have anything to fear domestically from Muslims. And of course, this was part of the pushback in New York when this was announced by Mayor de Blasio at the United Nations, and it was just one week ago today that this happened. There was pushback by the New York Civil Liberties Union and others that said, look, whenever you're talking about terrorism, it unfortunately seems to focus on Muslims. <laughs> right. who, who would think? Why would they do that? And they and went out of their way to say it's not going to be the case, going out of their way to talk about Dylan Roof and others and saying this is really what we're focused on. And quite frankly, it, that's very true because when you look at what they have done, and they've had conferences about every month in the last year, and here's some of the titles, Preventing and Countering Far-Right Extremism in the U EU, Preventing and Countering Far-Right Extremism and Radicalization, Tackling the Far-Right Across Europe, et cetera, et cetera. The, it, the only time I see the use of jihadis is jihadist use of the internet lessons for the far-right. So in other words, they're going to pick up on the ISIS uh, recruitment things for the far right. That's what they're concerned about. And we see the same sort of thing from the Southern Poverty Law Center. They will push back against the notion of Islamic extremism, Islamic radicalism. But they will, when they talk about extremism, when they talk about homegrown terrorists, they're focused simply on people that they identify as the far right. There's no concern whatsoever in any of their documents about people that you would say are the far left. Mm -hmm. or far Islam. It's simply about the far right. That's what right. we see over and over again. Yes, and even they're speaking at the UN, Obama said that violent extremism is not exclusive to Islam, which, yes. I mean, it is. Yes, <laughs> So exactly. And they're yeah. just going to really harp on this whole domestic terrorist, right-wing extremist. Why is there such a push to ignore what's happening there with well why is there a push to Islam? create isis i mean you, we talk about that constantly you know they, they're they've created isis as i as i mentioned yesterday we heard uh, back in the 80s with reagan that one man's uh, terrorist is another man's freedom fighter well that's what we're seeing today that, that he was talking about that when they created the mujahideen which became al-qaeda which has now become isis okay they're, they're moving all these different groups together they keep telling us that they have moderate rebels that are working with us. And yet everybody sees that cognitive dissonance, that that is absolutely not true, that they are doing, absolutely ignoring these people other than equipping them, training them, and helping them to move from fighting Russia as the Chechen uh, Muslim terrorists were doing. They take, took those Chechen terrorists, they moved them into Syria. And so that's why uh, the Russians are fighting this because they've already seen America use Islamic jihadis 
as surrogate fighters against them, not only in Afghanistan 30 years ago, but now in Syria and elsewhere. But they're using ISIS as a boogeyman for mm -hmm. the United States. They won't do anything to stop them. Or they had the major convoys. They could have stopped them. They haven't done anything to right. stop them. They continue to equip them, train them, import them. And that's why it is, is so obvious what they're doing. And now we see that they're coming across uh, the border, the story that Adon Salazar 